before the internet was really readily available for everyone, there was a thing of media called magazines. And a lot of people picked this up to figure out what was going on in the anime world and manga world and everything in between from Japanese culture and stuff like that. So let's talk about the history of anime and manga magazines. In the past of this channel, I have talked about anime comics. I have talked about anthologies such as like Shonen Jump and all that different things like Shoujo B and all that in that category. But this time I want to tackle the anime and manga magazine. I'm going to start it with the oldest in the United States, not the oldest overall, but the oldest one in the United States, which is Anime America. So let's dive into this one real quick. Any America was a monthly magazine published by Viz Media containing news, featuring articles, and reviews on manga, anime, and related media, as well as a section that serialized manga published by Viz. At the initial November 1992 preview issue, Any America's first regular issue was released in February 1993 with a March 1993 cover date. In 1998, Anna America Extra was launched as a separate manga anthology magazine, which eventually focused on shoujo titles, which was canceled in 2004. Viz changed the magazine format in April 2005, with the new magazine being three different free publications of the same name. One is advertising oriented and created specifically for distribution at anime and manga conventions, while the other were more general in scope with a, and with a version each for distribution through Walden Books and Border Stores. A similar version was later added for Best Buy stores. All three versions had fewer and briefer articles and a lower page count. For a lot of people, this was the first eye-opening thing. This is where they first picked it up and were like, oh, what what is this manga my friend talks about? Some people went into, I don't know, full stories about different shows. You got full previews full looks on different backgrounds you had full well-written articles such as the one i showed you about ramen and one half you got full dyes in the shows you got previews of manga it was everything you could want because if people didn't like or didn't know what show shonen jump was they could at least pick up a free magazine and take a look the last this was ever published was in 2005 it was june 2005 volume 6 was the last one that was ever published in this I have picked this up through a random store some way back when. Uh, it is being added to my library. I have a bunch of them in the, in the bin. But that is a quick pre. That is a quick preview of An America. If you come across these, pick them up. It's a very important history of this. This was the first landmark manga magazine in the United States that I could find, and I happen to have one physically in hand. So from there, we're gonna jump into Anime Insider. Now, Anime Insider was a little bit of a different one compared to Anime America. This was done by Wizards Entertainment, which is also known as Wizards of the Coast, which is Magic, did Yu-Gi-Oh, did Pokemon early on. This was their version and their take of what people would want that would be interesting. This contained like news, stuff readers submitted, manga previews, deep, sometimes gave out free DVDs, uh, it talked about theatrical releases, did manga releases. Let me go into more detail and more of a description of this one. Anime Insider was a monthly magazine published by Wizard Entertainment, consisting of news entertainment pieces relating to the Japanese anime and manga subculture. In the earliest incarnation, it was published from fall 2001 to fall 2002 as a series of quarterly specials under the, an under the title Anime Invasion, then became bi-monthly magazine in November 2002 and was renamed to Anime Insider in April 2003. The magazine was changed to monthly release schedule in 2005, which remained in a, its current cycle until they stopped in 2009. Wizard toted the magazine as number one anime and manga magazine in America in circulation, while containing information features such as interviews and exclusive reporting. Articles dedicated to satire or humor were also often included. A trademark feature in the Wizard's publication, Word Bubbles, were added into the printed pictures with the demise of new type usa in february 2008 which we will cover it was cited as the english language anime magazine with the highest distribution and sale across north america until 2009 where it ended this is one i don't have i might have it in my tub but i don't have it physically on me this is one of the ones that kind of took over after an america ceased its production some say that any anime insider was the reason why any america ended because anime insider offered stuff like 
on Japanese life. It had stuff like video games, general description like or articles on merchandise, figures, collectible card games, all that store and television. It, it just it covered a lot more than Any America did. But unfortunately, that came to an end as well. It just seemed as the internet got older or game got you know more developed the magazines were fading out as an older media i mean that you can see that in the case with dvds and stuff like that now let's go on to another one that is actually still in production not here in the united states but over in uk and ireland and all that stuff we're going to talk about neo now neo is a monthly published magazine that's in the united kingdom and in ireland by uncooked media it has kind of the same format as anime insider it offers j life it offers you know like articles on manga or different things user submitted it has a lot of different things but so let's take a little quick deeper dive into it neo was founded by editor Stu taylor and designer claire trent and originally had the working title of sushi ya neo was influenced by the magazines such as new type and pulp the latter of which featured editorials on film, book, music, and columns on Japanese culture as well as serialized comics. The first issue of Neo went for sale on November 25th, 2004. The current logo was adopted in the magazine's ninth issue, which was designed by TerraTag. In August 2016, the magazine's 153rd issue, the layout changed to a larger A4 size. The new staple bound larger format allowed posters to be placed in the magazine. In 2020, it was halted due to covid but came back in june of 2020 so as you see from earlier videos that i did pulp uh anthology had an effect on the creation of this magazine which is still going on to this day a lot of people still go to barnes and nobles or walkmans or different convenience stores or book publishers or like book sales stores to pick up magazines still read because to some people they can get exclusive like articles and insider looks on these in these magazines where you, sometimes you can't find them online now they do have a website i don't know if they really if they do online publish release i don't remember scratch that they do have a website so please go check out the website for neo but this is one of the ones that's still continuing and like i said this started back in 2004 so it has its roots and thing and it's about 20 years old they've been around the block for a while but i want to talk about one that's been going on since the 80s and for that we're gonna hop into new type now, New Type was in America for a very short time, and it's relatively lifespan. It was here from 2002 to 2008, and I actually do have one on hand. It's a big magazine. I love the look of it. It has, it's just, it's very good. I love how big it is. It's nice. It stands out. And just like the other ones, it has things on Japanese culture. It talks about different manga coming out, gives little excerpts. It shows different anime and actually has manga in it, but let's hop into the history just like the other ones. New Type is a monthly magazine publication originating from Japan, covering anime, to lesser extent, tonkatsu manga, Japanese science fiction seiyuu, and video games. It was launched by publishing company Katawada Shoten on March 8th, 1985, with the April issue, and has since been a regular release on the 10th of every month in its home country. The name of the magazine comes from new types in a universal century timeline of the Gundam series, specifically Mobile Suit Gundam 1979 and its sequel, Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam 1985. New Type magazine launched a week after Zeta Gundam began airing on March 2nd, 1985. Now, like I mentioned before, this has a lot of stuff in it. it over in Japan, it actually has like TV schedules on what anime is coming out. It has release schedules for manga. It, it, it stretches a lot more than it did over here. When it, the an, the English one came out, it talked about what anime is, you know, a general release schedule, but not like a television release schedule. It covers manga. It covers fiction stories. It covers art related to materials. It'll talk about computer graphics. It'll talk about games coming out. It'll talk about pop, you know, little figures or like gundam figures you know kind of like this little guy right here sneak peek into a future stream by the way it had a whole load of international versions some of them gave out dvds some of them did other different things they're trying vary in each issue but the big thing that affects or that new type still affects today it holds the the crown achieving for, uh, for a lot of anime studios and the uh, new type anime awards it's been doing it since 2011 and a lot of people have been 
mention in here that the, the categories for the award, like the award show, you can kind of compare it to like the Grammys and stuff. There is best anime overall, best anime film, best director, best actor, best supporting actor, best actress, best supporting actress, best male character, best fe female character. Loads of things. And you had shows like Madoka Magica, Fate Zero, Attack on Titan, Kill la Kill, Fate Stay Night, Unlimited Play Works, Fate Apocrypha, Idol Master, Demon Slayer, Kaguya Sama, Jujutsu Kaisen, you have Boku Rock, you have a bunch of things, bigger names, win these awards. And a lot of people tend to agree and use these as a characteristic and kind of a pillar point for different shows. They reference the new type anime awards all the time for these things. It's a very pinnacle and a big pillar in the anime community. Now I want to talk about something that's still in print that you can pick up everywhere that has also online but has physical stuff. I want to talk about Otaku USA. Otaku USA kind of takes the the page out of all of these. They're, it's kind of influenced by Anime Insider, Shonen Jump, New Type USA. It has posters. It talks about video games. It talks about everything that all the other ones do. Into one big mix mash, and this is still available in bookstores, newsstands, Walmart, bigger retailers, and you can find the digital ones on like iTunes, iPad, you know, Kindle, Android, PC, all that stuff. This one has a special heart for me, but let, before I talk about the story with this, let's dive into the, the more of the history of it. Otaku USA is a bi-monthly magazine published by Sovereign Media, which covers various elements of the otaku lifestyle, such as anime, manga, video games, cosplay, and Japanese pop culture and music. From an American perspective, the issues were accompanied by a DVD featuring three anime episodes, but as a 2009 a DVD feature was dropped and the double-sided poster of the magazine was also dropped starting with the... February 2010 issue. Otaku USA began publication in 2007. The editor in chief is Patrick Mackis. After the shutdown of New Type USA in 2000, February 2008, Anime Insider March 2009, Shonen Jump in April 2012, and a discontinuation of Proto Cultural Addicts since 2008, in, Otaku USA is the only remaining anime news magazine published in North America. It is the only remaining transatlantic competitor is Neo, the British-based title that covers similar topics in the stolen American stores, as I stated before. So with me, when I was a little wee blip back in 2014 getting back into it, and I covered in stories about my past with anime and stuff, I found this in, t in Barnes and Nobles. I don't remember if this is the exact issue or not. I don't remember what issue this is. It just says display until August. Oh, it's 2007. This ain't it. But I found one in the store and I picked it up and it kind of jump started and it turned me on to one of my favorite series that I have yet to like get over my love story. I've read the first chapter of my love story in Otaku USA. And my love story is such a good manga. I've talked about it plenty of times. It's my manga top five. This is what turned me on to a lot of series. I ended up picking up Otaku USA every time I go into Barnes and Nobles and see a new one. I always pick it up, but look through the manga, see what they have to offer. And I'm not the only one this has done this for. These are why magazines are pinnacle, because they give you sneak peeks on what's coming over, what to look for. I mean, yeah, there's free like manga websites online you can look for and see what's coming, but these allow you to know which ones are actually getting physical prints and nowadays there's so many coming out these can help you narrow down which ones might be the best ones to look for that would sell out fast because that was the case with Jujutsu Kaisen I believe this was in one of the Otaku USA's and same with fa a crazy fast food truck uh, and so a bunch of other stuff that I have over here overall Otaku USA is still available if you guys want to start picking them up go for it I know I'm going to start preserving all the ones I have. I got a magazine, like, kind of like comic backers, and I got all that stuff coming. What I wanted to say is, without the magazine presence of Shonen Jump, without the, well, the anthologies like Shonen Jump Pulp, without the magazine presence of America, and America, Anime Insider, Neo, New Type, Otaku USA... A lot of people could still be wary of anime, didn't know what it was like, and, you know, have that weird biased opinion that it's only for weirdos and it's not good, it's only for children. Whereas stuff like this, especially the cover, shows mm, it's not really just for children. And as we all know, there's a bunch of very adult-oriented uh, shows, not in the age category, but just overall. And those opened the minds of a lot of people, and they helped curve the way and paved the way and make new fans and helped basically make the culture that it is today. I mean, look at 
things now. Now, as of December, well, it's November 12th. There was an article recently saying that Walmart and Crunchyroll are collabing and going to start selling anime merch. They're going to have their own section in Walmart. That is huge for the anime community. If you were to tell me that five, seven years ago, I would never believe you. Because it was still that weird thing that you could only go pick up maybe a little bit in Hot Topic, a little bit in Spencer's. You had to go find stuff online specific, from specific stores or go to anime conventions. Now it's readily available everywhere. You can go to... I was down at the Speedway the other day and it had like anime like keychains you could buy from a grab bag. It's everywhere. And I honestly believe that Otaku USA, Neo, New Type, all those magazines help pave the way. Which is why I wanted to talk about them. And why I did a little bit of deep dive and showed these off because maybe some of the new people getting into anime manga don't know about it. So let me know what you guys think. Hit the subscribe button if you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you didn't like it. Tell me what you hated, what I should improve on. And until next time, I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.